Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing utilizing a star point ground. Now, many of you guys have seen many different videos on star point grounds, but when it comes to CNC, I wanted to show you in a simple controller. This is an integrated drive controller. It's a G540 system. How a star point ground is actually based. The term star point ground simply means we're using a single point to actually ground the entire system so that everything is sharing the same ground from your socket in case of how you're going to hook it up. So again, when I say that, think in terms of the electrical socket, the grounding point from that socket is going to ground everything. When I say everything, let me show you what I mean. Right now, this system is one of the more advanced master edition systems custom built for a client. We've got our ground bus right here. And I've got the Fluke 179 multimeter right here to show you exactly what I'm talking about with the typical grounding solution used with a star point ground. This is what most guys think of when they think of star point ground. I'm going to hit the ground on the power supply. And I'm going to hit the ground right here. And you can see we're at zero on the multimeter for resistance. And you can hear the chime letting you know you've got missile lock on that ground. Okay. Now... You can see two ground points, one, two, and that's coming in from these two leads right here. One of these leads is a shield drain, and this lead is a shield drain. One is for an input, and one is for a relay cable. Okay, now being this chassis is grounded, once again, you can see right there, we're grounded, and we're also using the ground on the power supply. This bus bar is also grounded through conduction. Okay, so that means whatever touches this chassis, whether it be the power supply, once again, I'm, I'm actually doing the power supply chassis here at zero, the electrical chassis, that's at zero. Everything that's touching that, including the ground on the auxiliary port, is also going to register zero. They're all interconnected. And they're not connected through this bus bar, but it's how the wiring is done. Okay, so you can use a bus bar like you see here to connect multiple points of uh, items or accessories that you want to ground, and that would be your star point. But the term star point ground is essentially just a configuration of wiring in order for you to ground your system to one central location, meaning if I hit the ground on the power supply, for instance, and I hit the auxiliary 120 volt input port, and I use its ground, it's grounded. If I then come down to the IEC power port to power the electronics, you're going to see it's grounded as well on its ground terminal. So everything is interconnected. Ground here, ground here, ground on the power supply, ground to a bus bar. It's all using one central point, and you're all set. So understanding this is imperative. A lot of guys get lost in detail and what they think they understand with a star point ground that a bus bar is used for everything. And a bus bar is really only used for multiple accessories to ground from at one central point. <clears throat> so again, the idea of a bus bar is so that you have a bar coming in with a terminal, or in this case, the chassis is grounded, and then through conduction, once again, you've got the bus bar grounded. That means whatever is attached to any of these terminals is going to be a ground point. So this would be one way to look at the version of a star point ground, but in general practice, when you're building your system, you want every ground for the system to be interconnected. And that, once again, means the chassis, the power supply should be grounded same location. Electrical enclosure grounded, same location. Ground bus bar grounded, same location. IEC power port grounded, same location. And then of course whatever auxiliary ports you have grounded, same location. The lower the resistance you see zero on that multimeter, that means that that ground is very very low in resistance to actually dissipate EMI. That is what you're going for. Okay. Now, again, you taking your time to understand this video, watch it again, and really take some notes, and really go over in your mind how you're going to dictate developing your system, because this is the key right here. You want a central grounding point 
for your shield drains and whatever other accessory you're going to have here. If it needs to be connected to a central grounding point, then naturally do that. And then you want to wire in the controller so that the grounds are set up properly and double check your power supply that you're using. I cannot tell you how many power supplies on the market are not properly grounded. And how do you test that? Well, just hit the ground on that power supply and hit the chassis on the power supply. So I'm hitting the ground terminal and I'm hitting the point on the chassis. You can do that anywhere. It should be totally conductive and you should be at zero. And you check the multimeter. I'm using a fluke. I'm not playing games. I'm trying to show you guys why, again, this is so critical. First of all, for safety. And second of all, to make sure that the system is going to provide the stability you're looking for. Okay? 98% of the time when a client has problems with a pass system or, you know, building his own system, the first thing I cover is proper grounding. And if we haven't checked it, we're going to check it. And that's why this process, once you understand it, is so critical. Because again, it's a lot of lost in translation details. This is an absolute must for safety and once again, to make sure the robot is as stable as possible. If you're using the proper double shielded cables as you should be, and you find that the chassis is not grounded properly, or they are not properly grounded, which leads to the ground bus in your system, you are going to have virtually standard cables. They will not function as a double shielded cable, so therefore they're becoming useless. They're an expensive standard cable. So this must be done, and again, I hope that this video has broken it down to make it as simple as possible. Watch it again, plan to take notes, and again, if you guys require consultations, quotes, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. Uh, general questions, of course. Uh, you can also message me through my eBay store. You'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. I thank you for your support. Take care.